Hey folks, this is Dr. Emily Sherning with American Resiliency here with an up-to-date climate outlook for all of our friends in Nevada. We're going to have some focus details here for our AR community members in Elko, Las Vegas, and Carson City. Top line info, this outlook is bad news for Vegas, but surprisingly good news for many of you toughies who are already dug in across northern Nevada. Change is coming, and I'm sure you're going to want to know where I'm getting my information so you can make some judgments as to its soundness. If this is your first time here, Let's take a minute with me to see how I set the table because I want you to be able to fact check everything I'm saying without too much work on your end. All of the resources that I'm going to be using to make this outlook are on the resources tab of my website, AmericanResiliency.org. Just click there, scroll down, you'll see our original visualizations first, moving down to the NCA5 source material itself. Also, to get on the same page when we're talking about climate, it's important to note that we're not where we expect it to be, that we continue to sit right about 1.5 C, as you can see here in the monthly bulletin from the Copernicus Institute, which is the EU's climate outfit. Many prominent climate scientists have been coming out to say that it's looking more and more like we're off the models, and the scientific community is also noting signs coming out of Antarctica, indicating that we need to take higher end sea level rise quite seriously. That's not a direct concern for Nevada, but it will influence population pressures both here in the U.S. and around the world. I think it's worth considering. And with all of these changes, it's very reasonable to be thinking about how your home will change as we approach 2C. At American Resiliency, we use the fifth national climate assessment data and figures for our projections because they represent the highest consensus climate science available. We have some of the most detailed projection of information available in the world here in America, you paid for it and you deserve meaningful access to the information. However, as a matter of congressional mandate, there's no direct federal funding for communication to the public about the National Climate Assessment. That's why I founded American Resiliency. We're the only nonprofit focused on communicating this important information to the public and we run on your donations. In Nevada, it's not gonna be a surprise to anyone that my big concern for you is water. So let's start there. Giving a little bit of background to viewers who aren't familiar, the big drinker in Nevada is Las Vegas, and Vegas gets water from Lake Mead. As we can see here in this visual from NASA, the water reserves from Lake Mead have dropped dramatically in my lifetime. We can see in this figure here that Lake Mead has pulled up from its scary lows in 2022. But if we look back over the last 40 years, the downward trend in Lake Mead is very clear. It is also entirely fair and reasonable to acknowledge that Las Vegas, during this time of increased water stress, has done an impressive job cutting water use and using more water in a cyclic, holistic way. Las Vegas has strong water rights and is unlikely to lose access to Colorado River water. But if you're drawing water in the lower Colorado Basin, the bottom line is that we're facing a long-term drought trend that's going to cause water stress throughout the basin. It's a big regional problem, and it's in that context that we're going to look at precipitation trends in Nevada. Starting with figure 210, an overview figure from the NCA5, we do see an interesting picture as we move in on the 2C information, where we do see this drought trend, as expected, impacting the lower Colorado Basin. But something else is going on as we look towards northern Nevada. We see actually a positive precipitation trend, fairly strong. It's crosshatched, so it's statistically significant. 10% more precipitation heading towards northern Nevada. Let's dig in on that and see what we're talking about in inches. We can see that in 4.3. And check this out here. Up for our friends up by Elko, we are actually talking about maybe an inch more precipitation a year. In this sort of arid environment, that's significant. And we can see that it is actually marginal. It's going to be kind of on the balance. You might get a sprinkling more rain towards southern Nevada. You might not. There is a drought trend here, but it's not nearly as strong as we see for southern California or for Arizona. In much of Nevada, it's likely this potential rain will be at best countering the projected heat increases we're going to be exploring in a little bit in this video it's important to note that these increases in precipitation are not like a jackpot, but they will help keep things keeping along about how they're going as we approach 2C in landscapes across the state. This is a good sign for Nevada, especially northern Nevada's potential for landscape stability. But of course, we're all increasingly aware that if you're getting more rain in the future climate, it may well be coming all at once as we're starting to really see across the country in 2024. So I'm looking at figure 212 to check extreme precipitation signals for Nevada. And there's some interesting stuff that I'm seeing here. 
One unfortunate element is that, look, one, two, three, extremely conserved storm signal falling in a pretty broad area here. If we zoom in on this central figure, looks like it's going to really wash Tonopah here. And I've gotten feedback from a solar professional that this is a region right here where the intense storm signal lies, where there's been interest in developing some large solar farms. So that's concerning from an energy transition perspective. This is a big area where we have this intense signal, highly conserved for very intense rain. That's saying that when you get rain here, it's going to be a serious deluge type rain covering large parts of the humble Toyabe National Forest. From my time living in Arizona, I know that a big rain on a desert landscape is not necessarily great news. Flash floods in this kind of a landscape, they can be very dangerous and very destructive. They can come rolling down an arroyo and hit you miles away where you don't expect it. I would consider this a very strong danger signal for that part of the state. But look what's going on here in Vegas and in Carson City and check it out. It is going on across the maps. There's a lighter patch over Carson City, lighter patch over Vegas, lighter patch over Carson City, lighter patch over Vegas. That is surprisingly good news for Nevada's population centers. These are unusual and intense signals indicating that there's a lower likelihood of super intense deluge type rain continuing to be a phenomena over these population centers in Nevada. I know that Las Vegas has had a couple of these bad deluges that have really flooded the place. I'm really excited to see any signal that that's not going to be your new normal. That is fabulous news for Las Vegas that we are maybe not looking at a trend towards deluge type rain over the city. Before we move on, Carson City, you also looked good. Elko, you do have a heightened risk of flash floods as a threat but you're not in what I'd describe as freaky outy territory on that factor. You got to think about what a 10% increase in rain intensity would mean and plan for that. That would be my suggestion for Elko and much of Northern Nevada. That was very interesting, folks. I'm glad we spent some time together looking at what's projected for the rains first. I think that's a both better overall outlook, although worse in some areas than many of us might've expected. I do absolutely love that I'm not seeing signs of your population centers getting hammered on that factor. Now let's look at the heat, because here you're not going to like it. We're over in figure 2.11 from the NCA5 looking at warm nights. In Vegas, it's not shocking anyone who's experiencing this hot summer in 2024. Vegas is looking to be staying hot all night for a long period of time every year. I'm transitioning over to the American Resiliency Total Heat Map, which stacks our total number of days over 95. We know that Vegas is looking at another month of nights over 70, another month where you absolutely need 24-7 air conditioning. Although, please note, northern Nevada, not a big increase in warm nights. Good sign for you. We are looking at an additional almost 65 days over 95 for Vegas, a tremendous hot season extension. I think it's worth noting again, that we see much smaller hot season extensions elsewhere in the state. If it's low in elevation, you could be talking about another month of hot season. If you're moving up higher in elevation, you could be talking about another two week extension in the hot season. So for much of Nevada, I'm actually surprised by how relatively manageable this is. I think that though for Vegas, it stands out that we are talking about just a tremendous day and night heat extension. But I'm going to make the wild guess that many of you do not actually care about a simple day over 95. I think that maybe you care about a day that's over 105. So let's drill down and get you just that information here in the NCA5 Atlas. We can really see how Vegas stands out here for this factor of additional days over 105. 19 additional days over 105 projected for Clark County by 2C. For our friends in Elko and Carson City, you have a comfortable increase of zero additional days over 105 projected. But 19 days over 105 for the millions of people living in Vegas is pretty significant. In Vegas, your energy demands are already huge. You know you need power to live there. This is another city like Phoenix, which is looking at larger heat increases than you are, believe it or not, where the future climate looks pretty anti-human. And if you want to live there, you need power. You need daytime cooling, and you're going to need more of it as we move into the future. And as we move through the energy transition, I think there's reason to be concerned 
that the kinds of brownouts and blackouts that have hit California may also hit Vegas during peak demand times. Your peak demand times are very serious peaks where power is not a want, when power is a survival need. If you are in Las Vegas and you want to stay in Vegas, it's just essential that you think about energy resilience for your household. But you know, all right, I think a lot of you folks in Nevada who aren't in Vegas ought to be thinking this is all not looking so bad. Let's check out the projected winter changes, the cold season changes. In 2.11, we come back to cold days and we can see a climb of cold loss across the state where up in the north you are losing a more of your cold duration than as we get down towards Vegas where it never really gets very cold anyway. Where we're looking at this darker color, we're talking about losing at least a month of cold, shading down towards more like three weeks as we get into that orange color. So a substantial change in winter cold duration for Nevada. Let's look at intensity. We're gonna go to a snip from figure 11.3 and get a side-by-side -side for your present day climate normals and the 2C projection. All right, so looking focused in on this intensity change in cold, as we'd expect, there's a lot of variation across the state, but overall, this is less extreme than I would have expected. You can see that up in that northwest corner, you've got higher change, about a 10 degree lift, but most of the state, even where we're seeing those big duration changes in much of the north, particularly the northeast, the absolute lows aren't projected to change very much. We're looking at about a five degree lift, and winter lows for most of the state. That's a below average factor on winter change if I compare Nevada to the national change landscape on this factor. If you're in Nevada and you get hard freezes now, the bottom line is you're still likely to continue getting hard freezes as we approach 2C. The more pieces we're putting together with this outlook, the better it's looking for landscape stability as we move out of Las Vegas for most of Nevada. And I think we can see that another way as we look at the fire map for very large fires projected in figure 7.4, where we see that around Nevada, of course, there is an increase in wildfire. We expect wildfire increases to be significant as we move towards 2C. But this color is lighter than you see to the north and you see towards particularly Idaho and Montana. We're going to be looking at a smaller increase in wildfire risk for Nevada than for much of the region, particularly to the north of you. Well, Nevada, your state has a reputation for gambling, of course, and a place that plays with luck ought to be counted on for its ability to surprise. But I will be honest with you, this outlook has shocked the heck out of me. I was expecting Vegas to look like an uninhabitable nightmare. I mean, I'm not going to lie. To my taste, it already does. You folks have endured just a terrible summer this year. You've been seeing a surge in heat-related illness and heat-related deaths in Las Vegas in 2024. But let's say that you're someone who likes a desert city, which is legitimate. Not everybody has to share my feelings about living in a large desert city. Maricopa County in AZ is picking up an extra 30 days over 105 compared to Clark County's 19. I think if you're a person who lives in Vegas, you've kind of signed up to live in a place that's already a, like all but on fire, right? So I think it's nice to see that you're looking at a comparatively more stable city than the Phoenix area in terms of the climate outlook, less disastrous levels of change. And I'm really glad to see that lack of deluge type rain in the Vegas outlook. Flooding was a big concern that I had for you that I'm surprised to see there are signals countering that expectation. Now, when we think about basically everybody else, everybody outside of Vegas and Nevada, I had thought you were gonna get big heat increases and serious drought trend, and then I didn't see either of them. You look nice. In fact, you look better than you did in the NCA4. I thought that I was gonna be all depressed after I did the research for Nevada, but I was tricked. Well, there is increased intensity in the future for your state, particularly on that storm factor, which looks very dangerous over Tonopah, you retain your character very well. I think many of your desert landscapes are likely to remain pretty stable. You know, you live in a harsh environment, you're already tough. Still, you should be prepared for a future where you need increased resilience. Cooling is important for some parts of the state, important for life. Water is critical for life everywhere in the state. If I lived in rural Nevada, I definitely wanna have deep enough home storage to be insulated from supply chain impacts. I'd wanna be very serious about water storage and I'd be very pleased with this potential outlook. If you already liked the margins in Nevada, you know you're making choices that wouldn't appeal to everyone, but you're probably already on the resilient side and the edges that you're holding, they look stable. They look like you're gonna be able to keep holding them. 
best of all, this outlook is not appealing enough to bring more people into your fragile land. Nice. Now, speaking, of course, about your population center as a final word. If you're a person who's ever thought seriously about grid collapse issues, you should be completely aware. Vegas is betting it all on the grid. Stay tough, Nevada. I'm wishing you all the best. Let's get ready. Folks, thanks for watching. And I want to thank everyone in the AR community for your contributions that are keeping this nonprofit going. If you want to donate, there's a link on the About page of our YouTube channel or on the top bar of our website, www.americanresiliency.org. I'm very grateful to our donors, to our volunteers, to everyone spreading the word online, and especially to everyone doing the work on the ground. Thanks for getting ready with me and talk with you again soon.